80% of people with MS experience MS fatigue. 80%. Nearly every person with MS will experience it at one time or another, and it's one of the leading reasons people with MS leave the workforce. It's been called the most impactful symptom of MS because it can interfere with all areas of our life. There is new research that's showing a significant correlation between fatigue and disability, that total daily activity is correlated with fatigue, and lower disability rate, better physical condition, and higher daily living activity were found to predict lower fatigue levels. You're going to want to stick around for the whole video where I break down exactly what the researchers saw and tips on how we may reduce our fatigue. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. My name is Vicki Hadge, and this is Even So It Is Well. Let's start with what is MS fatigue? Is it physical fatigue? Is it mental fatigue? It's actually both. There are two types of fatigue, secondary fatigue and primary fatigue. Secondary fatigue is from something that we did. Maybe we stayed out too late, or we did an activity that we don't usually do, or we overdid it on yard work because it was a nice day. Primary fatigue has no reason. It's just part of MS. An MS brain has to work harder than a brain without MS. We work harder cognitively every day, and it can be very fatiguing. If it's secondary fatigue, we can manage our lives and we can adjust. And I'll be talking about that and sharing tips later in the video. In an article published in the journal Multiple Sclerosis and Related Disorders in July of 2023, which I will link below, the authors reported on the association between relapsing remitting MS patients' disability, fatigue, and accelerometer-measured physical activity. The reason that this study caught my eye was it was large, used modern methods, and used multiple ways to assess fatigue and disability. In the study, they compared people with relapsing remitting MS to healthy controls. The participants in the study completed two standardized fatigue assessments, the Fatigue Severity Scale, FSS, and the Modern Fatigue Impact Scale, MFIS. And I'll link them both below if you'd like to see them and see where your fatigue may fall on them. And they use two clinical measurements of disability, the Expanded Disability Status Scale, EDSS, which many of us are familiar with, and the MS Functional Composite, MSFC, which encompasses tests of mobility, dexterity, and cognition. And I will also link information about both of these below. The EDSS scale is a scale that focuses more on physical disability, such as muscle weakness, loss of balance, and ability to walk. The MS functional composite is a three-part assessment that looks at leg function and ambulation, arm and hand function, and cognitive function. They also did a six-minute walk test, which measures the distance a person with MS can walk in six minutes, and a 30-second sit-up test, which tests how many sit-ups a person can do in 30 seconds. Participants were then sent home with an accelerometer. Accelerometers are devices that measure how much people move and the intensity of the movement. When they analyzed the results, they split the MS participants into two groups, one with an EDSS score of 2.5 or lower, which means they had mild disability, and the second group had people with an EDSS score of 3.0 to 5.5, which means they had disability up to the point where it interferes with daily activities and they're only able to walk without aid or arrest for 100 meters. What they found was a significant correlation between fatigue and disability. Those that had less disability had less fatigue. I know, I know what you're saying. Well, yeah, Vicki, anyone could have told you that. But they also found that those with more daily activity had less fatigue. And that's not all. Those with better physical condition, the capacity to exercise, also had less fatigue. So what does this mean for us? It means that we need to keep moving and keep in shape, even though it can become difficult to exercise with our symptoms and disabilities. No matter what our level of current disability is, it's really important that we keep exercising. I highly encourage you to ask your neurologist for a referral to a physical therapist that specializes in MS 
to find out what are the best types of exercise for you and your current symptoms and limitations. Or seek out exercises on your own that will help you. You're the expert in you and your MS. Some of the resources that I recommend are Dr. Gretchen Holly, The MS Gym, and MS Workouts. And I will put links to all of them below. Before we continue, could you do me a favor and like this video and subscribe? Both of these are important because they help the channel and it will help it to reach more people. Thanks so much. The researchers also found that total daily activity is correlated with fatigue. Higher activity levels were linked with less fatigue. The more activity that we can get into our day, the better our fatigue will be. I know it seems counterintuitive, but the more movement we can do, the less we're going to feel fatigued. One of the strategies that I've implemented recently is to move more throughout the day in smaller amounts. I try to get up at least once an hour and do some walking around the house or up and down the driveway. Getting up and moving my body and getting my blood circulating definitely helps me. I call them my exercise snacks. And I did a video on that recently and I'll put a link above and below if you'd like to check it out. Okay, let's talk a bit about physical condition. When the researchers looked at the six minute walk and the sit up test, they found a clear linear difference. Those that were in better shape had less fatigue. Keeping our muscles strong and toned will reduce our fatigue as well. So grab some weights or do some exercises that use your own body weight. Again, check out these resources to find options that may be best for you. Even if exercising is difficult for us, it's important that we continue to try to push ourselves to stay in shape to keep our fatigue levels lower. This does not mean that we need to walk 5Ks every day or bench press our own body weight. It means we need to do the best we can by whatever means we can. Exercise has been shown to help with both primary and secondary fatigue. Marco Lustarinen, the doctoral researcher at the University of Eastern Finland and the study's first author said, patients with MS should find a suitable form of exercise, taking into account their disability which maintains their functional capacity and reduces fatigue. Fatigue is one of the most common symptoms of MS, and it really affects our quality of life. It affects our ability to work, to socialize, and to care for ourselves and our loved ones. It is so important that we do our best to management. Some other things that we can do to help manage our fatigue in addition to exercise are get good sleep. If we wake up a lot each night or don't get a good seven to eight hours of sleep each night, it's like being jet lagged all the time. So try to get the best sleep that you can. Eat the most nutritious foods you can find. There are a number of recent studies showing eating a more whole food plant-based diet reduces MS fatigue. And I honestly feel it's the best thing we can do for our fatigue. I will link three of these recent studies that show how effective eating better is on our fatigue below. Increase our hydration. If we're walking around dehydrated, we will definitely feel more fatigued. A good rule of thumb is having a glass of water when we wake up, another at breakfast, one in between breakfast and lunch, one at lunch, one in between lunch and dinner, and another one after dinner. If you find you need to get up to pee at night, drink that last one soon after dinner. Be aware of comorbid conditions. Because we have MS, we're more likely to have other conditions such as other autoimmune diseases, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and others, and they may have fatigue as one of their symptoms as well. Be sure to work with your doctor to keep an eye out for these. Be aware of depression. Some studies show that upwards of 50% of people with MS have clinical depression, and some research is showing that it's a distinct symptom of MS. We're not depressed because we have MS, it's actually part of the MS. Along with depression comes fatigue. Talking with a therapist or talking with our doctors about treating depression may help our fatigue as well. And finally, be aware of polypharmacy. Polypharmacy is when we take multiple medications and sometimes the side effects can cause fatigue and sometimes they can interact with each other and cause fatigue talk with your doctors about the possibility of your meds causing more fatigue. 
fatigue can be a big problem for people with MS, but small habits can lead to great things. Some areas we might be able to improve and create new habits are working on our exercise and physical activity, getting good sleep, eating the most nutritious foods we can, staying hydrated, watching out for comorbid conditions, managing depression, and watching out for polypharmacy. Do you have other tips that help you with your fatigue? Please share them in the comments below. I love to hear from my viewers. To see more on living well with MS, watch these videos next. Please like, subscribe, and subscribe to my newsletter using the link below. Until next time, be well.